Communication is a fundamental human right. We have experience, we share experience, and we have more experience together. Do you agree? Today we will start with usability and we will finish with accessibility. One crucial thing really are definition of usability. If something is usable, whether it's a phone or website or a revolving door or a remote control, it means that a person of average or even below average ability and experience can figure out how to use the thing to accomplish something without it being more trouble than it's worth. And fun facts of life. We don't read pages, we scan them. We don't make optimal choices, we satisfy. We don't figure out how things work, we muddle through. Why does this happen? It's not important to us. For most of us, it doesn't matter to us whether we understand how things work as long as we can use them. It's not for lack of intelligence, but for lack of caring. It's just not important to us. If we find something that works, we stick to it. Once we find something that works, no matter how badly, we tend not to look for a better way. We'll use a better way if we stumble across one, but we seldom look for one. The myth of the average user The belief that most users are like us. The belief that most users are like anything. The only problem is there is no average user. All users are unique and all XYZ use is basically idiosyncratic. Where debates about what people like waste time and drain the team's energy Usability testing tends to diffuse most arguments and break impasses by moving the discussion away from the realm of what's right or wrong and what people like or dislike and into the realm of what works or doesn't work. The most important lesson is that everyone uses the XYZ tools quite differently. Welcome to Accessibility for Everyone. In this book, Laura Kalbeck talks about people who have disabilities rather than people who are disabled. We should consider the needs of our diverse audience rather than create a false separation between people without disabilities and people with disabilities. Can we agree to stop making excuses? It's too hard and there's too much to do. Types of disability. Five main areas of disability affect our use of the web. For example, visual impairments, auditory impairments, motor impairments, cognitive impairments, and vestibular disorders and seizures. Cognitive difficulties are incredibly diverse and the way people interact with web content will vary depending on their condition. Cognitive issues include memory, difficulties of remembering the task one is trying to accomplish, attention, difficulty focusing on large amounts of information or any information for prolonged periods, problem solving, difficulty processing information, especially if the content of the page is not what's expected. Text processing. Difficulty understanding text and difficulty expressing understanding through speech and language. Math processing. Difficulty understanding mathematical concepts and symbols, such as telling the time or distinguished quantities, money and pricing. Visual processing. Difficulty interpreting visual information or representatives visual of real world objects, such as icons. Scoping the project. At the beginning of a project, you will need to make many decisions that will have an impact on accessibility efforts and approaches, including 
What is the purpose of your product? Who are the target audiences for your product? What are their needs, restrictions, and technology preferences? What are the goals and tasks that your product enables the user to complete? What is the experience your product should provide for each combination of user group and user goal? How can accessibility be integrated during production? Which target platforms, browsers, operating systems, and assistive technologies should you test the product on? Research isn't just asking people what they like. If you ask people for their favorite color, and Susie likes white, but Annie likes blue, that's not going to help you design your website. Instead, research helps uncover people's motivations and habits, and how those might translate to their use of our X, Y, Z. How to start? To improve the experience for everyone, we can focus on the usability of the XYZ across four broad steps. Visual, make it easy to see. Auditory, make it easy to hear. Modor, make it easy to interact with. Cognitive, make it easy to understand. Thank you so much. If you find this content helpful for you, subscribe and share and see you next week.